Good morning. This is Dr. McDaniel. I'm a board certified obstetrician gynecologist in New York City. And I'm bringing to you all things health related for women. Thank you for joining me at the corner today. And uh, we're in the process of moving. So if you're uh, listening really closely, you may or may not hear some uh, hammering or some uh, uh, loud sudden noises. If you do, that's just uh, everything being broken down in the front, the breaking down chairs and exam tables and everything. We're moving. We're here in Midtown Manhattan, New York City on 35th and 7th, and we're moving down to 7th and 16th. So we're moving from the um, the fashion district, as it's called, all the way down to Chelsea. And I am leaving my solo private practice, and I'm joining a faculty group practice through NYU, New York University Medical Center. Um, if anyone has read or listened to older previous presentations, you know, I did my residency at NYU and Bellevue Hospitals, and I stayed as faculty. It's considered, it's called voluntary faculty um, with NYU since I finished my residency in 1997. So, what is that? It's like, um, let's see, I've been a doctor for almost 30 years, so it's like 26 years or so. Uh, so I've been on faculty as an assistant clinical professor in the OBGYN department since 97, and um, now I'm going to be joining a multi-specialty practice, a faculty group practice with NYU uh, starting January 3rd. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's I'm turning a new leaf. It's a relief. Uh, our lease was is up the end of this month, December. So I didn't want to sign a, a big long lease and all the responsibility and all the work that, that entails with the practice. So it's really nice. Now I'm going to move to the multi specialty group practice. I'll be able to offer the patients a lot more, uh, just on site in terms of primary care doctors and other specialists. So it's going to be a huge, uh, big move forward. Big page, new page, and I won't be doing my presentations though anymore from my office here. Uh, um, I'm going to do them from home. I can't do them on site at Chelsea, uh, so I'm going to have to do them from home. We're going to set up, we have a library at home, so we're going to set up hopefully my diplomas and everything on the back to make it contain to look fairly professional. For now, I took a picture of my office wall. We're going to be close taking everything down off the, the wall here. Today's Monday, so we'll probably do it Wednesday and we'll reset everything up in my office at home. For now, I just took a picture of the office and so I'm gonna do it through a um, virtual background, but a lot of changes in store. So that's a long presentation um, for what's going on here and why you may or may not hear a whole bunch of noise in the background, we'll see. So as the title indicates oh and before i move on please make sure you hit the like subscribe follow buttons if you enjoy the content if you have questions make sure you leave questions uh in the comment uh, comment area and um if you have any suggestions recommendations or requests for future topics please make sure you you note that in the comments uh also please all right so as the title indicates i'm going to speak about infections today and I really feel like for the last two years, I've pretty much spoken on everything, but I know a lot of people don't go all the way back uh, to look up topics that were presented in 2019. So today I'm going to do a little twist on vaginal infections, and um, it's, um, it's going to speak on why some women will notice abnormal bleeding when they actually just have a vaginal infection. So as you know, vaginal infections come in three three different categories, pretty much. So they either come as a bacterial infection, a yeast fungal infection, or potentially, I guess it's four really, a sexual infection, or the last one would be a combination of one, the other, or the third, the first, second, or the third. Uh, so Whenever there's an infection present, and an infection is really just an abnormal growth, an overgrowth, or an abnormal growth of the normal 
um, contents that are supposed to be there, the normal flora that's supposed to be there, um, or from a contaminant that's outgrown its normal, balanced, homeostatic in environment or concentration. Uh, so, and it's causing symptoms. So if you have an overgrowth or an imbalance, but you're not aware of it, you feel perfectly fine. You don't have any irritation, any discomfort, any itching, any burning. You don't notice a bad odor. It, you don't even notice a discharge. Then that's an imbalance, but it's not an, an considered an infection because you don't have symptoms from it. So you have to have symptoms for it to be considered an infection unless it's a sexual infection. So sexual infections, 90% of them do not have symptoms, but they can wreak havoc that can potentially be life altering, such as fertility problems. So however, if you have a bacterial imbalance, overgrowth, or a yeast fungal imbalance, overgrowth, if you don't have symptoms, then we call that a vaginosis, which literally from the Latin just means too much of in the vagina. But it's not an infection, which would be a vaginitis, and that would be uh, a resultant inflammatory response from that overgrowth. So plenty of times over the years, I've done a vaginal exam for someone coming in for routine annual uh, with, a pap, for, with a pap smear uh, request, or they're coming in to check their IUD string, or they're coming in for something completely unrelated, maybe. They uh, noticed a bump on their cervix, or they um, are having some kind of pelvic pain, and uh, they think they feel pressure or um, growth or something in the vagina. So I'll put the speculum in, and which is what people call the clamp. I'll put the speculum in, and I'll take a look, and I'll notice there's tons of vaginal discharge, just tons. So... If they're not having symptoms, bad odor, irritation, itching, burning, swelling, rash, sore, um, liquid from the vagina, then it's not considered an infection unless it's an STD. Now, if someone has an infection or an overgrowth or an imbalance and they don't have any symptoms, however, they come in complaining of weird bleeding, that may be the only symptom that they actually have of an infection. So I've done presentations in the past on how to sort out abnormal bleeding, bleeding outside of the menstrual cycle. But one of the sources, and I'll, I'll redo some of those, update them for people who aren't going to go all the way back. Uh, but one of the symptoms of a vaginal infection can be abnormal bleeding. And that can be for two reasons. The biggest and most important reason is that it could potentially be due to a sexual infection. So both chlamydia and gonorrhea can potentially 90% of the time not have any symptoms at all. The 10% of the times that there is a symptom due to chlamydia or gonorrhea will potentially be just abnormal bleeding. And that's because those two infections are highly inflammatory and the body can respond to that inflammatory process by uh, causing inflammation of the small blood vessels or capillaries in the cervix and higher up. They can get swollen due to that inflammatory process and they can spasm and they can bleed all on their own. Or also those two infections are the only vaginal infections that can all on their own ascend into the genital tract. So instead of staying in the vaginal cervical environment, they can ascend up the cervix into the uterus. They can cause destabilization of the uterine lining, and they can cause quite a bit of abnormal bleeding because the uterine lining is unstable. So they can cause something as simple as light spotting, pink, uh, bloody show, or they can cause heavy bleeding like a menstrual cycle or even worse. So anytime there's any abnormal bleeding, the first thing we will always do, of course, is a pregnancy test to make sure it's not abnormal bleeding or pregnancy. But the second thing we'll do is we'll send the rest of that urine for cultures to confirm that the bleeding is not due to chlamydia or gonorrhea, which are both sexual infections. Now, 
If someone does not have chlamydia or gonorrhea as the infectious source of their abnormal bleeding, they could potentially have bleeding just from an overgrowth of the normal bacteria or from yeast fungal elements because bacterial elements will cause abnormal bleeding potentially faster than yeast or fungal elements, but they can all do it because they can mount an inflammatory response and that inflammatory response on the cervix itself. And I've seen a handful of times just the vaginal walls. The inflammatory response causes swelling and fragility of the small blood vessels, the capillaries. So you can see it on the cervix, just you put the speculum in, you can see the cervix is angry and a lot of the tiny little blood vessels, you can actually see with bleeding dots, polka dots of blood, or just oozing blood on the cervical face and the cervical bed itself. I've also seen that on the vaginal walls of the cervix where I put the speculum in and the vaginal wall itself is oozing blood because it's so inflamed. The tissue is very fragile. The little thin blood vessels or capillaries underneath that lining are swollen and they're spasming and they're bleeding all on their own. So I hope that's been um, helpful information on just how a vaginal infection, yeast, fungal, bacterial, or chlamydia, gonorrhea can potentially cause abnormal bleeding and it could potentially be its only symptom. And I guess last but not least, I'll add that um, if someone is douching, and we don't see very many people who still douche, uh, but if someone has douche, then they could potentially push or swoosh up bacterial infectious bacteria in the vag vaginal vault itself into the uterus, and then that can do the same thing as chlamydia gonorrhea. It can destabilize the uterine lining, and that can cause heavy abnormal menstrual life bleeding or worse. So I hope that's been helpful information on how um, vaginal bleeding can be a sign or symptom of a vaginal infection such as yeast, fungal, bacterial elements, or even chlamydia gonorrhea. Thank you for joining me at The Corner. This is Dr. McDaniel. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.